Welcome to the WT FFF Special Series, brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP, where your hosts, Tom and Tracy Hazard, explore the all about the what of 3D workflows from concept to print. Hey everyone, welcome back to the WT FFF Special Series, uh, sponsored by 3D Print uh, from HP and 3D Print by HP, I guess you could tell it either way, and Z by HP. And because we, Z by HP is a little more on the design side, this is one of the episodes that I actually really liked and asked us to include in the series, so we, we did because this is all about designing 3D prints so in, and 3D design to print because that's kind of the process flow of our creative workflow and how you do it, right? Obviously. So they asked us to just do a little update. And as we were going through the post for this and the original content. episode, yeah, yeah, the content, the episode, we realized, wow, this has got everything in it that we do do. There isn't anything new that we've really added. So we just want to give it a little context for you. Well, also, I mean, I, I think it makes a lot of sense to bring this episode back because the lessons learned, I mean, there have been more lessons learned since we were, you know, first published this episode. They are all in the same vein of the elements of the design process and, and creating, you know, a, a 3D design. Uh, but it, it makes a lot of sense to, to revisit this and, and have things changed that much or are some things the same? It's just some of the technology has allowed us to achieve more, do it faster and such. Right. And I think this is, we're not really addressing the technical, like what, you know, what did we learn about? Like, you know, heated build plates no, versus no. not like we're, or, you know, using, you know, different types of, you know, materials. Like we didn't, we're not talking about that here. This is more about the design process because when we started 3D printing, way back when, uh, we discovered that the design process we used, while the process was important and we needed to follow our workflow in a similar way, we actually had to mix it up a little bit because the iteration process is both so intensive and important, but we also needed to make sure that what we were printing and what we were using was useful to an audience, useful to a consumer, useful to whoever our end product was supposed to go to, whether it was our client or an actual buyer out there. So we always look at things from a little bit different perspective than other product designers and other 3D print designers out there. And so that's part of what this is. So this is our, our design process that we follow. Um, it's an abbreviated version of it because it's only on the front end of the process. We do have like more steps as you go through and take something into manufacturing. But if your end at it at this point is the 3D print. Right. And so that's where we stopped it in the process. So there are five steps and, and, and this is what we always do when we approach a new project. And I think that it is what we've learned over time is that if we try to mix this up and do them in a different order, it doesn't work. So the order that we know of for our design process and our design workflow from going from th designing 3D prints, so um, going all the way through, as I said before, to print, from 3D design to print, when we do that, the first thing we need to do is think, right? The of absolute course. first thing we need to do is think. The second thing we need to do is think about the audience. So who is it for? What's, where is it going to go? Like all of that, it's context of, of what's going to happen from that. Um, then the third thing we like you know is you like is really important is being getting yourself really CAD proficient so it's not a hindrance to what you're trying to communicate what yeah. you're trying to do you don't want the tools you use and of course at some point to 3d print something a tool involves software CAD software you know you got to create a model that's going to be printed you really can't print it without that uh, but don't let that tool hold you back. And that's one of the things I'm so excited, Tracy, with this series with HP is some of the new software tools that we talked about. Yeah, as we're going to, you're going to get to it in a, a couple of episodes, you're going to get to our XR series, our VR and all of that. And really the CAD tools are becoming more intuitive. So there's oh a lot more going on there. So, so much opportunity. You're going to really want to see that. But you got to get yourself proficient at it because when you're technically challenged on anything, you're overthinking things and you're not in the process. So that's kind of why we talk about that. Then we need to test it out 
And that's really weird to getting perspective on something. So when we design something, you're designing it in a vacuum. And so you need to go out there and you need to make touch points and perspective resets and get someone to say, is this really as intuitive as I think it is? Is this really as good? Are you excited about this? Would you buy this? Like these are the things that we're always asking because we all have blind spots as designer. And as 3D printers, <laughs> we also get into our own heads about the tech about it. And we think, oh, oh, everybody's gonna love this. And then they go, hmm, that finishes a a little funky you know so you need to get that outside perspective in and so that's really important so the testing it out part and then the last part is that's when we refine so we don't refine too early in the process and we'll talk about that in this episode and we don't do it because it, it can be a waste of time when we've gotten ourselves caught up in details that don't matter hmm. so yeah you know this is the thing about it is like we really want to stress continual learning and, and that means that we're, you know, we're not just talking about, as we've been talking about education and all of these things, and as we're segueing into design and technology and some of the cool things that we're going into this next segment of episodes, you know, this is, this is really something that we, we're always learning. We're always learning something new about the technology. We're always learning something new about how to process our materials, but we're always also reinforming it and, and giving ourselves an overarching creative workflow that we know is our process, we know works again and again. And we always have to fit these things in within that and keep that open-mindedness to how things might work and keep that curiosity. And if we build that into the sort of process of what we do for designing 3D prints, we're going to be better off. Always, you know, and sometimes you go through things where you, you might, shortcut something for the sake of time or you think oh i don't really need to go through all the steps because i've got experience and you know what you get reminded every time yeah you know what you can't really shortcut these steps and processes you gotta go through it all make it be a part of your normal process and then the fantastic work will come out from that yeah so let's get some insights into our lessons learned after thousands of hours 3D printing <laughs> and designing for 3D prints. And we've been doing a lot of reflection on the thousands of hours we've been 3D printing or talking about 3D printing or designing for 3D printing. And it's been, we've been sort of thinking about what did we really learn in this process and were we able to do what we set out to do, which is really help people jump the learning curve. Did we jump the learning curve? Did we scale it? Are we more efficient now than we ever were before? Oh, I definitely think we're more efficient now than we ever were before. No question. Yeah. No question we are. You know, and this is the thing I get when I go out and I give lectures and I talk all over the place when I talk about design and innovation and how we design. And when I tell people we did 250 products, they look at me like I'm insane. Like, how did you manage to do that? And I want to go, well, really, there were actually probably thousands of products if you want to look at our binder. But we didn't ever show them to anybody because we didn't take them to market. So we probably, I mean, for every one design that we take to market, I mean, there might have been a dozen rejects and sometimes more. So it's not about the designing part of it that we get fast and prolific with. It's about having the order of the process be right. That's what I always tell people. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And I think there are some lessons we've learned about the process of how to do this with using 3D printing as a creating 3D prints or 3D printed designs. Um, there are some things we've learned and some key factors and uh, recommendations that we have for people. Yeah, yeah. We came up with the list of five that we think are the most important. And the order in which we do it is the important part of it. So when we set out to design a 3D print, we think first. Absolutely. You know, this surprises a lot of people, especially if they're not designers. Like, well, what do you mean? You don't just design it in the computer? Well, no, I don't. We talk a lot, actually. We, yeah, we do. <laughs> I mean, it really starts in your head. And this actually is also a surprise, I think, to especially aspiring young designers coming out of school who are, you know, interviewing for their first job, whether that's an internship or their first full-time position. They don't really realize, I care a lot less about what's in your portfolio that you've done when you're in school. I'm going to ask you questions because I want to know if you know how to think. Right. And so design thinking and thinking first is part of the process. And there might be some sketches and demonstration. And we like to bounce it off of each other. This is one of the reasons why we believe that we've been very successful with the products that we've launched is because that creative process happens at all hours, at all times. And for us being able to access each other and be able to say, hey, you know, I've been mulling over the idea that we want to create a puzzle this year for our holiday gift. 
And how are we going to do it? And I've been thinking about this. You know, I saw something yesterday that inspired me. And now I drew this quick little sketch. What do you think? And it might be Sunday. How often when you work in an office space, do you get to do that? Yeah, you, you don't get to do that very often. And the other advantage, a little slight sidebar here, is that because we work together and because we're married, I also can tell you absolutely the truth. There's no corporate politics involved where I'm worried about my job or worried about getting reprimanded for one thing or another. And if I think your idea is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, I'm going to tell you, I think that's crap. But that never happens, right? Oh, no, no, rarely, never. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but that we do have that kind of rapport with each other because we know it. And, and the best part is that this is my favorite part. Whenever I do tell Tom that something is just no, like I usually don't even say it's crap. I just go, no, that's not it. Tom goes back and thinks more. Especially if he's like, I feel like I'm onto something. Somehow I didn't express it or it's not there yet or something's not right yet. And then we'll discuss it a little further and I might say, you know, I think this audience, this particular audience, which is our number two thing, who is it for, would be the number two thing we consider as we're designing for 3D printing. And when I look at that, we would go, yeah, you know, I think this audience isn't going to like something made out of plastic. And I don't think that we want to go for an FFF on this. And so we discuss that back and forth. And that also helps to further refine the idea. No, it definitely does. I think that everybody, at least this is my opinion. I mean, every designer has an ego. I have one too. You have one too. Boy, do you have one too. Hey. (laughs) No, but every designer has an ego. And the reality is, I think to be able to put that ego aside and to really open your mind up to the perspective of others and some of the others that you trust in particular. Yeah, this is not your friends and family. This is not, no, no, no. We're not saying design by committee. That's not the point at all here. I mean, this is trusted design partnerships or whether they be mentors or other advisors. I mean, get some other perspectives because we all have blind spots. Right. There's this great book I read pretty recently called Originals. And one of the messages that he makes very clear there is that major innovation happens more often when you ask experts and get their input than when you ask the focus group, the audience, when you ask your friends and family, when you ask in your little network of inventors or makers or whatever. You have to go for high-level experts within the field or within the product category, or whatever that might be. And that is where you really get the most constructive feedback that you can do something with. And it really tells you whether or not you're onto something or you're not. Right. And so one of these things, and we talk about this, ego, it's really about not treating a single design as a baby ever. I mean, you can't do what we do and the way that we do it and as fast as we do it if we thought each one of them was so great that they had to be out on the market. Yeah, we don't really they, have that attachment to our designs. No, they're not precious. They, they're just they another be. idea. Now, but that doesn't mean that it can't be a great design and be very valuable to a lot of people, but it's got to go through a very long process and there's no point in wasting time on something that just doesn't meet the criteria. Yeah, but it doesn't mean, and we talk about this, there's an episode we call Discarding 3D Print Ideas. We call it our discard pile, right? You're playing cards, you have a hand. Sometimes you have to discard a card that's a really great card. I Wouldn't I love the Queen of Hearts, but... Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit my hand right now. So let me discard it down and it may come back up in your hand and be perfect for it. Right. Or maybe you sit there and orchestrate your hand over time to be perfect for the next time she comes up. So like that's kind of how we look at these ideas. We aren't getting rid of them. We're not going to ignore them. We're not saying they're bad. We're just saying they're not going to be the most viable going forward and they're not going to be best for the audience we want. So we think first, we figure out who it's for, and then we really screen those two things together and say, is this right? And should we go forward? Yeah. The who it's for is not to be really underemphasized either. Who yeah, it's don't gloss for, over this one. Who it's for is critical. I mean, if a object you're making doesn't have a purpose, if there isn't someone who's going to want it or find value in it or benefit from it, then what is the point? Well, that's design. I mean, in an art situation, there still is a viewer. There still is someone who you want to receive it. So it's no different there as well. You have an audience. Is it going to be in a gallery? Are they going to watch it? Who is the message you want? Who are the people you want to attract to your message? You want to attract your art. It doesn't matter whether it's art, design, engineering, any of those things. It still has an audience. It still has someone that it's for or some place that it needs to be. That's a fit, 
right? So that's what you're evaluating is that right fit right there at number two. And then our number three is really something we believe in strongly. You must continually be CAD proficient. You must get your skills down to the point at which they are like breathing. Yep. CAD, you know what? Some CAD programs are a lot more difficult than others to learn. But one thing's for sure, you can't 3D print something that you see in your mind's eye unless you can build it in three dimensions in a computer. So you've got to develop a level of proficiency at one or more CAD programs to be able to realize your vision or your sketch or right. whatever you know it is that you're trying to do. You and, can't let your tech skills limit your design skills. That's right. just because your imagination is great. Your tech skills need to keep up. And one of the ways that like we recommend doing that is by a marathon. So we loved this episode we did a while back about the 3D printed espresso cups or coffee cups. And we thought that was a really great project. He set out for himself to create 30 days, 30 cups. Yep. One cup a day. One cup a day. Very simple concept. But each cup had its own uniqueness. Some of them had texture. Some of them didn't. Some of them were sized differently. Like he learned all sorts of CAD things and tested his skills along the way. That's a great way to crash course yourself into. Give yourself a marathon task like that and build your skills quickly. You know, it's hard for me to really be able to give a lot of good modern advice on how to learn how to use a CAD program other than just dig into it and do it. You need mileage under your belt. You need time doing it, model after model after model. I don't know that I could teach it effectively, you know, like teaching a class or something for a certain CAD program because I've just been doing it for so darn long now. Anyway, I've been using CAD for all those years, I've got well more than 10,000 hours of oh CAD work probably have the belt. I probably I, have, I don't think I have 100. We've added I've it up. Probably we have, 20 or 30,000 of CAD, but also mixed in with a whole bunch of design right. and other things too. But you don't have to have 20 or 30,000 hours in before you do that. But even a couple thousand hours in doing CAD, and I mean that, I'm serious, a couple thousand hours is what it's going to take before you stop thinking about, all right, what command am I going to use to do that? And you just actually do it. You see it in your mind, what you want to make. You go sit down at your computer and, you know, you start your CAD program. You're like, okay. And you just start doing it and it's second nature. That's where great work happens when you're not slowing yourself down to think about the process and the tool I need to use. And right. I everybody wanna... has to go through that first, but right. you've got to get through it. I want to liken this to those of you who are writers out there. So when you go through and you, you sit down to write an article, a blog post, a book chapter, whatever it is that you do, the number one rule of writing is that you just write. If you edit while you're writing, you're making a huge mistake because you will be much less efficient. You'll end up in this cycle of not making enough progress, not getting enough ideas out, and you actually will hurt your overall writing, not just your speed, but the quality of the work at the end of the day. So the number one rule is to just go and do it. And the best way to it is obviously you're not looking at your fingers typing anything. You're just typing. It's just coming out of your brain and going in there. You don't want that short circuit that happens as you start to edit yourself. And that's what happens when you're starting to like think about the CAD functions. When you start to think about how how do I make this happen? It's the same process in your brain that is not letting you push your idea out and be creative. It's short circuiting the creativity process. Right. I agree with that. And, you know, that's why we say you think first. And thinking is part of designing for us. And so is sketching. And it's a process that goes back and forth for me between a sketchbook and my mind. And I'm thinking and designing. Before I ever get to the computer, by the time I get to the computer, it's really all about execution. I know what I want to do. I have a vision for what it is, and I'm just going and realizing that vision. But then it's about solving problems along the way, which leads us to our number four, which is test, test, test. You know when you've thought it through and you've started to like visualize what this is going to be, and as you get into your computer to go do that, you know that there's a big challenge in a particular section, a function you have to solve or some area that is complicated. We solve those first if possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, now wonderful thing about 3D printing, you can print just a portion of your object, the most difficult or the most challenging portion, and make sure that it's going to work, that it ends up being what you wanted and expected it to be. And if not, you make a modification and you do it again. And you do that over and over. 
that is the most wonderful part about 3D printing and is that iteration process. And it's because it matches the iteration process of design, that that's how the design process itself has to work. You have to learn something, fix it, move on. Learn something, fix it, redo it again. <laughs> you know, whatever you've got to keep going on until you get it the way that you want it, till you get it what's right. And then we save for number five, our last step that we save in sort of the process. Not that there's not a hundred little mini steps within that, but there These is are just sort of five type, key takeaways. Five here. key takeaways, yeah, is that we refine last. We call it, you know, sometimes in engineering you call it value add engineering, or that uh, sounds boring. It sounds really boring, but <laughs> but basically, you know, the idea is that look, I've got this print, and now I'm going to really worry about the printing part of it. I'm going to worry about how should I orient it. I'm going to worry about what the most efficient way to do this. Sometimes you might have to go back and do a little redesign to make that work because it will make it more efficient. But we don't want to compromise the initial design process, encumber it with that thinking. With the minutia of getting it every detail right and executing right on the first try? No, definitely not. No, you want to get through that and say, is this working? Is this visually what I want? Does this look like what I want? Is this who it's for is going to love this? You know, you want to get that part out first and then worry about how long it takes to print and whether or not you need certain support in certain areas, how you can make that work better, how you can make it all more efficient. So, you know, I mean, this is like, I don't think this is any different than the design process we took before. That it just 3D printing's in the mix of it. It would just take a whole lot longer to do the testing part, prototyping part. Like we might have to go down to the shop and like cobble together something that maybe didn't look as pretty as it can look on the 3D print machine and just test out our thing. So the life cycle, the time cycle was longer before, but is not now. That's the best part about it. Yeah. To me, it's speed of process and more accurate and honestly more fun because you're spending less time actually constructing something and more time creating and making it a great design so that's that's, right and that's our ultimate goal our ultimate goal is that we know that what we do best is doing the thinking and sketching and refining and getting that work done And so we want to really spend as much time in that part of the process, in that creative portion of the process as possible. And when you get encumbered and all those other things are are difficult or arduous or you do them in the wrong order and then you have to go back and redo and rethink, that just makes the process not as rewarding for us. So that's why we've worked it out the way that we do. It gives us the most time to spend in section one and two, which we love so thinking about it and then defining who it's for and and how we're going to make them love it. It's all a part of the process, all aspects of it. But yeah, I think that that front end process is uh, some of the most fun. But 3D printing has become, I think, brought a lot of fun into the process that wasn't there prior. Because, you know, you get a lot of loss of enthusiasm when you talk about that longer cycle, time cycle. So you had this great enthusiasm designing it, getting the specs out, and then you send it off to the prototyper or to, in our case, it goes all the way to Asia to be prototyped. And then it's like, a month later, maybe you get it or a couple weeks later and you just have that loss of immediate enthusiasm and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I've already moved on in my head and started designing the next thing. Well, not only is there a loss of enthusiasm, but if that two, three weeks later coming back from being prototyped over in Asia, like we've done a lot in the past and it really doesn't work, it isn't what you expected it to be, then you've really lost a lot of time and it's very disappointing. So 3D printing is all right by me. Yeah. So... Designing 3D prints, we love it. We are looking at new ways to be even more efficient and do it faster. That's a lot of our discussions lately. So we're continuing to think about this. And as we were thinking about this, we realized that this is how we would outline the process as to how it would work for someone else, how we define it. So think first, define who it's for, get really CAD proficient, and then work on it in CAD. Test, test, test in pieces if necessary and refine the production process very last. All right. Well, hope that's helpful to a lot of you. Some few good nuggets there from some people that have a lot of mileage under their belts in terms of designing products. So hope that's useful to you and feel free, adopt it, add to it. Let us know what you think. Come check out the blog post on 3dstartpoint.com or talk to us anywhere on social media at 3dstartpoint and give us your thoughts. There's no bad ideas here. There's things to add and different ways of working, different ways of working but this is how we do it and what we think is most important. So this has been Tracy and Tom on the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. 
Thanks for listening to the WTFFF special series brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP. You can access all the resources mentioned in this episode and all the other episodes in this series by going to 3dstartpoint.com slash HP. We invite you to reach out to us on social at 3D Startpoint and at Z by HP and let us know what you are creating in 3D.